Welcome to Hometown Haunts. Tonight, Mavalia Paranormal travels to Bedford as we investigate the Jean Benet Tavern. When we arrived at the Jean Benet, Darren and I met with Melissa, the owner, and had her give us a small tour and tell us a little history about the place. Okay. Hi, Melissa. My name's Tyson. Hi, Tyson. Melissa Jacobs. Hi. Uh, can you give me a little history on the place? Sure. My husband and I have um, been the owners here since 1999. Okay. And um, it's, the building is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It was built in 1762. And it, one of the main reasons it's on the National Register historic places is because of the role that was played here during the Whiskey Rebellion, okay. where farmers met here on the property to raise a liberty pole to protest the whiskey tax. Okay. Um, tell me some of the, uh, there's been some pretty famous site for hauntings. Can you give me some of the stories behind some of the hauntings? Sure, it really is. Um, in 2008, the state of Pennsylvania came out with a top 10 list of haunted sites in Pennsylvania, right. and the Jean Tavern was number four on wow, that okay. list. So it really has a very widespread reputation for being haunted and having um, activity that occurs here. And um, some of the most uh, famous ghost stories probably have to do with um, the story of there was a man that was hung in the building. Okay. He was a highway robber or a horse thief, he's referred to. In the late 1700s, he was robbing travelers along the Forbes Road at that time, which is now the Lincoln Highway on right. US Route 30. Okay. And they set a trap for him, they caught him, they brought him inside the building here and hung him in the tavern, found him guilty and hung him. Um, is there anything that happened down here while we're down here that happened? Yes. Uh, want things? Yeah, one, um, yeah. an interesting fact for down here is, is that in the 1950s, um, there was a dirt floor that was into this back corner. It was back filled with dirt. Okay. And when they removed the dirt, when they were digging out the dirt, there was a body of a man that was oh, okay. down here um, in that dirt. And it was obviously had been there for a long time. That All that was left were buckles and buttons from his coat. Um, so it wasn't anything that was recent. And it was never investigated or anything. Right. Cause it was, they just thought it was just happened too long ago to okay. be of any criminal right. significance at right. that point. So right. if it was murdered, murdered, murdered a criminal probably dead by now. That's exactly right. right. So. And then most recently there was a woman who was in who was just amazing. And she was from Chicago. They didn't know anything about the building. They just stopped on their way passing through. And when she walked into this room, she walked in and she said um, someone was shot in this room. It had to do with gambling. He um, lost more money than he could pay, and, um, and she said one shot, he was killed right in this room. Wow. And so it just, so, you know, that to me, I like it when things follow kind of like a pattern. Yeah. But, and there's been people, you know, who have gotten, like, orbs or, you know, different things, like, in this room that are, so. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. We're in one of our bed and breakfast rooms right yeah. now, and we have overnight guests. Um, Every week we have you know, guests that stay here. We have a total of four rooms, and I mean our occupancy can be anywhere between 50% and 80 to 90% during our peak season. So okay. they, we really have a lot of guests that come and spend the night here with us. Right. And there are a lot of stories then that the guests will share with us in the mornings when they come down for breakfast. And it's interesting to me how many times people will say that they wake up and this rocking chair is rocking. Yeah. Or that they put something on the rocking chair when they come, and in the morning when they get up, whatever they placed on the rocking chairs on the ground. So that's like one of the patterns of things that we'll see from our bed and breakfast guests. Well, I was just I was leafing through the journal there, reading some of the stuff people put that they've experienced in the rooms and stuff, and they've said that about someone sit on the bed or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and that's another sensation that people have frequently when they're here is that there's someone that either sits beside them on the bed or um, they'll feel like someone's like laying beside them or something along those lines. Right. So that is one of those things that people will say they experience here. Um, another thing they'll hear, a lot of times people will hear um, footsteps that okay. sound like they come right up to the door and then they stop and eventually they'll get curious and open the door and there's no one in the hallway. Okay. And um, so people say that a lot of times, that they'll hear footsteps 
in the hall. So, That's cool. Yeah. Okay. As we began setting up for the investigation, we wanted to focus on three main areas of the Jean Benet. On the second floor, bedroom three, where people experience the sensation of someone sitting on the edge of the bed as they sleep. On the first floor, we wanted to focus on the Forbes room, where a man was shot and killed while playing poker. Lastly, the basement dining area, where when they added the addition, the remains of a body was exhumed. As the investigation began, teams broke down like this. Darren, Marty, and myself were upstairs, and the three ladies, Eliza, Amy, and Diane, were downstairs in control. <laughs> nice and Darren and Marty upstairs, John and May. So as Marty, Darren, and myself are investigating in room three, off to my left, where Darren is sitting, we hear a small vocalization. Nothing discernible, just a small vocalization. Take a listen. Can you give a sign of your presence, please? Is that something in your stomach? I heard that. That wasn't in my stomach. It wasn't mine. So I went, hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear that, Marty? Yeah. That's like it was in there with you, Darren. That's where I thought, I thought maybe somebody, you know, like if, you're, if Marty's stomach would have growled, it would have been a direct shot to me, but... That nah, wasn't me. Yeah, it sounded like a hmm. Yeah. Can you make that noise again for us? Hope the voice recorder picked that up. Well, it should, man. I heard it out here, so. We think we heard you. Can you do that again? Can you make that vocalization or voice? Can you say something again? As Darren, Marty, and myself are approaching the back of the downstairs dining area, the REM pod goes off, an unexplained EMF spike. Coincidentally, it's in the same area where the remains of a body were found. Take a look. So after getting very little interaction in the downstairs dining area, Darren, Marty, and myself go up to control and let Diane, Amy, and Eliza go down into the downstairs dining area and try their hand in investigating. Did you own this place at one time? We're 
we're here to talk to you, see if you want to talk to us. So why don't you just come down here with us. So as the ladies are downstairs in the dining area, they start a PSB7 spirit box session. It doesn't take very long before they start getting Class A EVP interactions. Amy says, can you be polite and say hello? She gets a response. See if you can hear what it says. Is anybody here with us? Be polite and say hello. Could you hear it? We think it says, Can I be what? Take another listen. Is anybody here with us? Can you be polite and say hello? Eliza is explaining to Diane how the PSB7 works and how we discern responses compared to radio stations. If a response happens over a course of multiple radio station frequencies, it's a response, not a radio, not a radio station. While she's explaining this, we get a Class A EVP. See if you can hear what it says. See, what gets me is if it was just one radio station, you could only hear it for like a second. How do you hear like words? Carry five radio stations. See, like that, that was just one station. Yeah. We don't think we heard you. We think we heard you, but we didn't understand it. That one wasn't too hard. Very clear hello. Take another listen. See, like that, that was just one description. Yeah. We don't think we heard you. We think we heard you, but we didn't understand it. The third and most impressive response that the ladies get, Amy asks, are you here to help President Washington? She gets a very direct response. See if you can hear what it says. Did you come here to help President Washington? Did you hear it? With the same voice which uttered the first two EVPs, says George Washington. What's interesting to note is, Amy didn't say George Washington, she said President Washington. It's almost as if the Spirit's correcting her because at the time this Spirit would have been alive, George Washington was not the President. See if you can hear it again. Did you come here to help President Washington? At Bombshell Salon, we know how important it is to look the part without paying the price. With over 75 years of combined experience, we are a full-service salon for all your hair needs, along with manicures, pedicures, and waxing. With affordable rates and friendly atmosphere, you will quickly agree that Bombshell Salon is a family destination for all your beautification needs. Located outside of Phillipsburg on Tyrone Pike, open Tuesdays through Saturdays. Walk-ins welcome. Bombshell Salon. If your hair isn't becoming to you, then you should be coming to Bombshell. Are you tired of the same old boring night out? <coughs> Grab your friends and liven up your night at the after dark. You have an amazing night out as you dance the night away in the area's biggest light and sound system. With daily drink specials, a large selection of domestic and craft beers on tap, and live entertainment, you'll never have a dull night again. The after dark, located at 150 Industrial Park Road, Clearfield. Start living after dark. Hey folks, I'm Tyson Lidget, and if there's one thing I take as serious as being a paranormal investigator is taking care of my hunger. That's why my team and I always come to Highway Pizza in Phillipsburg. With a great selection of pizza made daily with fresh homemade dough, wings, strombolis, garlic fries, and sticky buns. And of course, my favorite, walking ready pizza by the slice. It's enough to scare away any hunger. So come on down to Highway Pizza in Phillipsburg and check them out. Hey, tell them Mobile Paranormal sent you receive a dollar off any round pie or a dozen wings.
Life is full of questions. Your choice for affordable cremation service shouldn't be one. I'm Rob Reed, the owner of the Reed Funeral Home in Hopsdale for over 18 years. Cremation service can be costly, but I understand the importance of value. That's why I specialize in affordable cremation services starting at $985 with no hidden fees. So whether you're looking for the traditional funeral services or our affordable cremation services, look no further than the Reed Funeral Home in Hopsdale. Affordable, professional services for all your planning needs. When it comes to your business name, no one knows how important it is to showcase your business better than full throttle signs. Specializing in banners, vinyl signs, and large format printing, they handle all your promotional needs. So whether it's a lighted sign for your business, advertising for your vehicle with state-of-the-art wrapping, we got you covered. Full Throttle Signs. Check us out at FullThrottleSigns.com. Give us a call at 814-765-5375. Welcome back to Hometown Haunts. Tonight, Mavalia Paranormal is investigating the Jean Benet Tavern in Bedford. So as the guys are sitting at Control Center, I send Marty and Darren up to room three, and they place a maglite style flashlight on the nightstand beside the bed. It doesn't take very long for them to leave the room and come back down to Control, and it starts reacting. Take a look. So we're doing an experiment for a bag light, a nightstand, the one room that's coming on off. <clears throat> so shortly after Darren and Marty put the flashlight on the nightstand, we're watching on the monitor, and the flashlight comes on, and a half a second later, the geophone reacts as well. Take a look.
make it brighter. The next piece of evidence we're going to show you is a light anomaly we capture. This happens over a course of one frame, which is less than a second. Much too fast for a piece of dust or a bug. Now as you watch the light anomaly, it clearly has a ball of light, which is self-illuminating, and a tail like a comet, and it shoots diagonally from the floor to the ceiling and goes across the screen. We're going to slow this film down so you can see it for as long as it is. So midway through the investigation, Marty and Amy had to unfortunately leave because Marty had work early in the morning. At that point, Diane and Eliza took control while Darren and I went to the Forbes room where a man was shot playing poker. All right, Tyson and Darren in the Forbes room. As Darren and I are investigating in the Forbes room, we're trying to establish communication while using a push button style flashlight and it's sitting on a table in front of us. When suddenly we hear a knock, Darren says, is someone there? Can you do it again? We hear another knock. Take a listen. Excuse me. It's just simply a light. Push on the back of it. It'll dim for you. If you can do that, we can use this as a means of communication. Can you dim the light for us, please? Knock again for us. We heard you twice, but I need to know for sure that's you. Can you knock a third time? Do that again, please. If you're here with us, do that again. I'm trying to shift my weight around to see if he a floorboard or something. 
In the next scene you're going to see, we get three consecutive geophone hits all within about a 30 second period. The interesting thing to note is this was happening. Everybody in the building was down in the basement in the dining area doing a PSB7 session. Nobody was on the first floor, nobody was on the second floor. This footage was captured on our night vision DVR system. It's a low resolution system and the video quality isn't great. So we enlarged and zoomed in on the geo phone so you can see it a little more clearly. Take another look. So that's our investigation of the Jean Benet Tavern in Bedford. You've seen the evidence we've collected. Now the case is in your hands. Haunted or not, you decide. Hey, like us on Facebook and let us know what you think. Is the Jean Benet haunted or not? Thanks for watching.